in terms of a bad DJ, you often find it's people who are trying not to be what they are. So the opposite to what I've just said. So um, every now and again you find, you still find the odd people who want to play YMCA every gig and it's raining men and Agadoo and um, the Okie Koki. And I always apply the, the basic principle of would you drive around town with your windows wound down and that track playing out loud? And if the answer is no, then that's not cool. And if you're not listening to this in your own private time, then you shouldn't be inflicting an audience to it. And um, an audience will appreciate what you like. If you like it, then the chances are someone else will as well. The longest question I've got here, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be a bit of a preamble, um, because uh, I want you to contrast and compare what what DJ meant in my day before you were even born? Yeah. Because I was I was once a small, very small time DJ. Uh, there was a talk of the Midlands uh, place in Derby where it used to have chicken in a basket, black and white minstrels, and Bob Monkhouse. But at the back they had really? uh, a youth club. Yeah. Uh, and so I was a DJ at the youth club there, and I used to follow a sort of a structure to my evening um, that would look something like this. You'd start off with. Um, and this is in the days before even 12 inch singles, so all you had was a Schweppes crate, crate full of um, yeah. 7 inch singles. So it would be, play the stuff that was just bubbling under the charts to show that you're pretty hip and you're, you're on mm -hmm. the, you, you know your music. Uh, then start to play stuff that would get the girls up, so things like uh, the theme from the deep by Donna Summer would usually get it, they'd all be doing their sensual dancing and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, this is the bit that you're going to think is really bizarre, because uh, even the big nightclubs were doing it, but you'd then play stuff that would get the blokes up, uh, yeah. So you talk about status quo and deep purple at this point. Okay. <laughs> so Caroline or roll over late. But, but it was in the top ten. Uh, but and they were spreading. And it's what to they it. were asking it, for. It, the blokes could do a good spreading dance, a good yeah. ma male dance to it. Uh, then then you'd start to put some hot tracks on that would get everybody up. But because um, it was before twelve inch singles, you used to have a, two, a seven inch single. You used to have to buy two copies of it because the extended version was on the B side. Yeah. So things like Love Machine by the by the Miracles was one. And if they were really going for it, you'd need you'd need to extend it a bit so you'd queue up the next one <laughs> to try and get side and then that to come takes in. a bit of effort. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, and then finally, uh, you'd get to the end of the night where you would have to have at least two slow dancers to end the night before all the house lights came on. Yeah. How does that compare? All that long intro. How does that compare to what goes on now with a structure of a set? that people Depends would say in tramps or something like that. Depends on the night. I mean, every place where I've played, you know, I've played 70s nights, I've played old school nights, I've played reggae nights, rock nights, right through to play a bit of everything. And then, you know, old school cheese nights almost. Yeah. Um, it depends on the crowd and you can look at them and after a while of doing it and if you're DJing four or five nights a week, you almost pick up the art of looking at someone and just as we kind of alluded to earlier on and, and the punks will dress one way, your goths will dress another, you can almost judge people, you know, as much as they don't want to be judged based on what they're dressed in and you can almost take one look at them and see the colours they're wearing, the way they've done their hair as to, I know, five songs that you'll like. and. If they don't give the game away, look at their friends, because people will always get friendly with all of the people in the same kind of music genre. And I tend to feel that, you know, friends never really connect unless they connect musically. So when you look at these different groups, you can pretty much read what they're, what they're going to be up for. And as long as you know, you know, four or five really great tracks of that, then you can structure your set. Um, but yeah, you can pretty much always guarantee that your men will never want to be the first on the dance floor and when it comes to especially playing a private event and they say oh we want the DJ from half past seven then we're going to do a spot of food and then we're going to do a, yeah. you know that people are never going to walk straight in off the street and walk straight onto the dance floor with their arms in the air without even buying a drink um, you know not to say that people need to be drunk for when they're dancing but there's almost unwritten rules of how it's going to work and you know people will never dance at a private party till 9 30. you know if they're if they're very young and they're going clubbing afterwards and they don't intend to stay beyond midnight then they might dance before the food but it's very rare that they do because in in most of those situations you know people haven't seen each other for for years in a club environment again it's very different um 
an interesting way which I look at it and using you know my experience of working in radio is um, sometimes you're not necessarily looking at the biggest songs because if it's half past seven you put your biggest song on you could find that no one will dance um, and it's the same with radio you know no one's ever going to dance to your biggest songs while you're playing them on the radio sometimes it's about compiling a list of what's the least irritating songs and how do you stop pushing people away um, because you know you can have 20 people at the peak of your night on a dance floor doing the YMCA absolutely loving it you can have 80 people sitting out absolutely hating it um, but for a DJ you can you know you're seeing those people interacting with you and those people are ready to go home if their glasses were empty they would have been in the next cab home so sometimes it's a case of when you're structuring your nights um, not necessarily looking at your biggest hits but looking at what will be the ones which are the most tolerable in those early stages and you bubble under you so that people always know that you can always bring it up to that next level someone once described it to me as you know it's like having an Aston Martin car and you know that you can go up to 270 miles per hour on the Aston Martin but it will cruise at 90 and you know at 90 miles per hour you just know it's holding back on the power and then getting into a little Fiat Uno and driving that at 90 miles per hour and you're absolutely bursting the engine out of it and I think the same is very, you know, that early stage of a night where you're playing tracks, you're demonstrating your musical knowledge people can think, hang on a minute, he's onto something here but you just haven't gone for it because you've got all of that headroom which you can take it to um, and as you say, you know, the women will be probably the first to break in that dance floor and sometimes you don't even have to play to the men because if there's 100 women in your nightclub, you know, there's going to be 500 men. If there's going to be 100 men in your nightclub, well, half an hour's time there's going to be no one left. So, you know, women attract men, men don't attract women. It's a very sad case. But, um, you know, you could pretty much get away with playing women tracks all night if you wanted to because those guys will always follow those women onto the dance floor. You know, it's only really in that last half an hour where you can start being a bit more niche and you think, I've got you now. You've, you've stayed all night, you've paid your money, you're not going anywhere, nothing else is open. It's a choice of going home, getting the kebab, or um, you know, you stay here and you put your arms in the air and you have a great time. Um, and then that last song, um, or sometimes we call it erection section, <laughs> yeah. can be uh, you know, based on individual merit. You know? um, sometimes it works, most of the time it doesn't because you know, I think the way that the way things have progressed over the years is love songs aren't as frequently released anymore. The ones which are are kind of not cool, and um, and and those who've gone out to pull one another, you know, at the end of the night, it's like scraping the bottom of the barrel. You end up with the dregs, the people right. who are, that were left over. So you know, those people have already pulled. They've already gone out. Bands, most of the times I see them have got a, a set playlist and they will work through it. Yeah. So they've got they've already worked it out in advance where if it's for an hour. Even the top bands, if you went to see Led Zeppelin, they would have the whole two yeah. hours mapped out and uh, they're known for their improvisation and things. It sounds like with DJing there's a lot more psychology and people watching going on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the the thing that you look at most of all, you know, I think with computers coming in people say oh they're all staring at the screen most of all no I think they're watching the crowd but uh, you, you think they're staring at the screen because they're staring at the screen more than you but you know you're only transfixed on someone for half a second at the time but you know most of the time you're on a, you're on a platform of some description you can see pretty much the whole club in 95% in of the, the cases so wherever you look you can see the general mood and it's an interesting kind of vantage point as well because you get to feel a feel of a of a place and you can see the groove, you can see the way crowds get brushed up. You can also predict a fight five minutes before one happens and you know that's why the bouncers are always standing up on high. They're not necessarily looking waiting for something. They can sense it. And you know that that can also be influenced by by music. I remember once uh, someone saying to me, you know, if you're gonna play Daydream Believer by the monkeys, don't don't think about bringing this here because everyone will fight. And you know that can still happen pretty much with a lot of you know, guitar tracks or old tracks where you can put your arms up in the air next thing you know beer is spilt over someone and they're all having a fight and Mike George of here um, he said something which was really inspirational to me once is take the artist because they're obviously into that style of music 
you obviously like that particular artist and think of the rules of three so Dancing Queen okay that's gone uh, Mamma Mia that's gone uh, Gimme 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 that's the track which you're going to play someone comes up and you ask you for Wham uh, Wake Me Up Before You Go Go Freedom um, Club Tropicana and people respect your uh, musical uh, journey that you take them on take them through some of those forgotten gems that they may have forgotten about mm. but you've suddenly thrown back into the mix uh, and it's a lot more classy that way and you know you've given them the artist you've given them the uh, era and, and the genre that they, they're after but it hasn't almost been like someone's banged the foot on the brake. You manipulate sound within a track as well what's, yeah. what's going on in your mind there? So audiences never understand what you're doing because you can be at those decks and you know like one one track which I mix in um, which is a, a daft punk track with a dead mouse track I'll take four minutes and they're both running simultaneously with a loop on a loop on both sides and I'll be EQing them both in and out and actually be adding a bit of distortion to the one side which sounds like it would be absolutely horrible but it isn't when you add a bit of reverb to it as well um, and then when the crowd look like they're almost done um, I can take that loop off and in will kick the vocal but it's still the melody from the last song so you've now started to glue the melody over a track of uh, a, another familiar track and they're turning around and coming back and you're adding to that dance floor from those other people who suddenly like this new track and you might take another four minutes so you know at the end of that you might be doing a seven or eight minute mix so for me I, I'm, I'm a big user of loops so I might grab four, eight, uh, sixteen beat loop uh, before lyrics kick in for example and loop it up pull all the treble pull out the middle out and you can start bubbling the bass line underneath and as you're bringing that up in the mix and it's starting to get noticeable you can almost pull the bass out of your existing playing track so all of a sudden people's feet are now going to this new bass line they're de completely unaware of what their own body's doing and they're singing along with the track which they know and now you're starting to bring in the melody on the on the middle but you've still got the, the vocal line on the middle of the other track and then slowly you're bringing the treble down from the track that they're dancing to into the new song and maybe then you know they're aware of something that they may be starting to detect their favourite song coming in and whoa this is quite clever and it might be then you take a word or you take a phrase or you take a bar or a beat and you start looping that one on their last song because now this is the one that's giving you the punch, this is the one which is making you move uh, this is just coloration as I call it so you might now be doing some fancy bits putting beats in, changing words, swapping things around and being quite clever um, and then at the given point you can then drop that fader, take the loop off and in kicks in the, the melody line or the vocal line of that song. I've kind of reinvented myself in the last 12 months because I think that you know there's a lot of people the, the iPod generation suddenly came up and it's the one industry where in the last 10 years you know DJs are almost earning less than what they were a decade ago while everyone else has seen you know the benefits of inflation it's one of those things where iPods and MP3 players came onto the market loads of people went out and bought themselves netbooks and any Tom, Dick and Harry thought that they could put together a playlist or a set or they were DJs and you know you're seeing it particularly in in the private world where you know there might be a 40th birthday party an 18th to 21st and they're frightened of picking up the phone you know an 18 year old person who was born in 1990 something is frightened of picking up the phone and ending up with someone who's going to play them it's raining men and 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 BG's staying alive all night so you know they're going to want to program a load of dubstep so they find that sometimes you know they grab maybe 60 of their friends are coming to the party, drop them all on me email, what's your favourite song? So they've been compiling lists, you know, of 60 tracks, there we are, we stick that on loop, there's the night. But what they don't realise, it's only entertaining one person at a time. And it, the other 59 might be absolutely hating what's on at the moment. And people are wondering why, you know, clubs are slightly in the demise and, uh, you know, and, and a lot of clubs decided to employ bar staff because it was cheaper. They kind of lost the recognition of the art a little bit.